Meanwhile, the European Union is revamping its energy plans in a bid to try and end its reliance on Russian oil and gas as soon as possible. Now, in a plan that was outlined on Wednesday, the EU aims to speed up its switch, its switch to green energy by massively increasing solar and wind power. Now, in order to do this, the EU needs an extra $220 billion over the course of the next five years. The senior EU officials, however, have conceded that the race to get off the Russian gas will mean burning more coal and more nuclear energy in the short term. The plan is in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and it proposes to upgrade the EU Green Deal, the bloc's flagship policy to combat climate crisis. The Commission has also proposed that nearly about 45% of EU's energy mix should come from renewable sources of energy by 2030. This is an increase from the current 40% target suggested just less than a year ago. The officials also want to cut out energy consumption by nearly about 13% by the year 2030, in comparison with the earlier current proposal of 9%. To rapidly reduce our dependency on Russian fossil fuels by really fast-forwarding the clean energy transitions. On the targets, we raise the target for the share of renewables in 2030 from 40 to 45 percent. So your aim that you declared here today to significantly increase the wind power in the North Sea by 2030 will also contribute to this objective. Now, Europe's decision to wean itself off Russian gas has also led to a scramble to increase Europe's import of liquefied natural gas from countries such as the United States, from Qatar and Azerbaijan. This means, however, that the EU will be spending nearly about $12.6 billion to building terminals, a move which has been criticised by green campaigners. The EU Commission, however, has assured that the EU could still meet its target of net zero emissions by 2050, despite the short-term increase in coal consumption. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.